54 year old Chris Straub went missing last night near Sedona. He left the Orchid Canyon Resort to go fishing around four, but didn't show up for dinner with his wife at 530. Search and rescue crews found Straub's body today near the creek. So far, no cause of death. Halloween is a month away, and this year, more kids are expected to trick-or-treat. Now that COVID-19 vaccines are available, the director of the CDC weighed in and said that kids should be able to safely trick-or-treat outdoors, adding it might be best to avoid crowded Halloween parties, but says kids should be able to trick-or-treat in small groups. Last year, the CDC took a much tougher stance on trick-or-treating, saying it was a high-risk activity because cases were be beginning to uptick ahead of the winter surge. Search. An update now on the proposed RV lot for the Picture Rocks area. The developer has decided to pull the plug on the project that outraged many in the rural community. TNT Engineering LLC withdrew the plan for the 75 acre desert area on Friday. One resident today says it's a win. Our roads cannot handle this. The RVs would be a transient community. People with children were very concerned about having transients come in and out. And I certainly understand that. Um, and it, it just not something that works out here. Well, the reaction during a community meeting is apparently why the agents pulled uh, this deal out, as saying in part, quote, we feel that a significant number of the project's neighbors were very passionate about not having an RV park in their neighborhood. We also feel that the success of any land development project is predicated by the support of the people living around it. Let's turn our attention, uh, Brian, in for Kyler, and it is the final day of uh, monsoon coming up tomorrow. It is, and it's also very pretty outside. I can see those current uh, conditions outside, and they yeah. look really pretty. They do. They look very nice. You know, you might wonder why. You know, we got a chance of rain in the forecast, but meanwhile, the dew point below 54, not all that high for monsoon. It doesn't seem like monsoon type weather with low 80s feeling great. Feels much more like fall. It's a kind of a transitional time for us, but it still counts as monsoon. So any rain we get between now and tomorrow night uh, will add towards that rainfall total for monsoon. 81 degrees currently in Tucson, 74 in Nogales, 71 in Sierra Vista, feeling great, cool and cloudy for the most part and cooling off fast this evening. You can see there's a few isolated showers and thunderstorms. Those will be increasing as this system starts to lower down into our area. That really starts tonight and then goes into tomorrow morning. So the chances for storms will be increasing up to about 30 to 40%. After midnight, it looks likely that we get these showers and storms moving through the metro area. Area, how much rain we're going to get, at least what we're forecasting. That's coming up in the full forecast. All right, Brian, thank you. The Arizona Burn Foundation is teaming up with Tucson Fire to bring their services to our area. I met with the CEO of the foundation along with a burn survivor to find out why these services are so needed. It can happen in a matter of seconds. I was burned as a toddler. And last a lifetime. And that was back in 1956. I was burned over 40% of my body. My parents and I had no support. But now that's changing thanks to the Arizona Burn Foundation. What we work with is the family members to make sure right at that crisis moment to make sure they understand there's going to be help, there's going to be okay, there's going to be these opportunities for you to heal. For Gail Petrio, the healing has been long overdue. Burn survivors typically go through PTSD. We tend to hide, and I did not come out of hiding until this year. It's a struggle that isn't always seen. I grew up believing that I was different from everyone else, disfigured even though you can't necessarily see my burns. I saw myself as I see it, not as other people see me. And while burns are life-changing incidents, some can be prevented. We are starting to really work with Tucson Fire to do prevention because we know that the best way not to have a burn injury is to learn how to prevent burn injury. So that's what we're bringing to Tucson as well. Through support groups, equine therapy, and so much more, Tucsonan burn survivors can soon come together. It's knowing you're not alone and that there are other people that have struggled with the same things you've struggled with. Because no one should have to heal alone. What I'm finding is as I share my story, I'm healing more than I was before, and it enables other people to share their story. 
And the foundation is actually hosting their first event this Saturday with the help of TFD. They'll be installing free smoke alarms. And of course, we'll have all the information listed on our website. Congratulations to her. She seems like she's really kind of pulled it together and come out of what was obviously a very traumatic uh, situation. Yeah, and she says yeah. she looks forward to meeting other bird yeah, survivors and, and having that community here. That's great. Well, still ahead, writing a book became a family affair. How three generations from a Tucson family came together and they store storytelling together as well. You're watching Kagan 9 on your side. Three generations of a Tucson family came together to write a book. Yeah, Scott Peterson, his father Jeff, and grandfather Val all contributed to Scott's new book, On the Wild Side, in the heat of Arizona. The fictional book is about Alaskan Huskies stranded in Arizona. Val was a writer years ago and authored Communication is the Key, and Jeff was a U.S. Air Force pilot in Afghanistan. They brought their experiences together to help publish their book. I felt proud because of what I was to accomplish, but with the help of my, with the help of my dad and my grandpa, just knowing that um, that it's kind of like a little of a legacy of our family makes me proud. <laughs> makes me makes me feel good about the the things that I may have done to help con contribute to that. The trio held a book signing back in June at Bowles Senior Living Community. If you want to read it yourself, copies are available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Books A Million. That is Good for awesome. Them. Yeah. You'd love to see families get together mm -hmm. to do something cool yeah. like that. Well, Brian is in for Kyler today. Yeah, the clouds have rolled back in. The chance of rain going up as well, Brian? Yes, we're seeing those chances increasing. It's looking like in the late night and overnight hours, and then once again later on in the afternoon and second round tomorrow. We'll talk about that coming up. Now, your first warning weather with meteorologist Brian Brennan. Sponsored by Caesar Sportsbook. So this much advertised system the last couple of days is finally here. You can see this trough of low pressure across much of the western half of the United States. And the southern edge of that system is moving into the state of Arizona and has been the last few hours. Most of the activity north of Phoenix right now. But we are going to continue to see increasing thunderstorm activity in southern Arizona as a disturbance kind of rides down the west side of that system. So right now there's enough instability and enough moisture that we do have a few thunderstorms out there east of Tombstone. You can see a thunderstorm moving off to the east and then just west of Pima County, you can see a flood advisory there with a good heavy thunderstorm happening. So uh, we'll see more as we head into the later evening hours. Right now, just kind of isolated activity and tomorrow looks a little wet as well. 88 degrees, the high temperature today, just a few degrees cooler than what's normal for this time of year. 82 in Nogala, 78 in Sierra Vista. The current temperatures, low 80s in Tucson, mid to low 70s in Cochise County and Santa Cruz County. So the future cast showing some heavy showers and thunderstorms firing up just around midnight north of Tucson. So we expect this to move off to the south and east and then through the metro area uh, once we get into the overnight hours. As soon as this clicks in. <laughs> Sorry, the computer models. There we go. All right, moving through the Tucson area in the overnight hours and then by the time we get to the afternoon hours, we'll see some clearing from west to east, and that should uh, have some showers and thunderstorms firing up. The areas that miss out on the morning showers are more likely to start to see that clearing and then also the more activity in the afternoon. It clears out pretty quick and moves off to the east. Some showers and thunderstorms up in the White Mountains on Friday, but otherwise Friday looks pretty much sunny and clear in Tucson. Again, until we get to midnight, we won't see too much accumulation north of uh, the Tucson metro area. Might see some good heavy rainfall amounts and just standardly, we'll see between a tenth to a quarter of an inch of rain for many locations widespread. Western Pima County might miss out on a lot of the rainfall, but from central Pima County east, it's looking pretty good. And any of those storms that drop a good heavier thunderstorm that comes through could see more um, in those localized spots. And it's just so close to being what we need to move up a ranking uh, to the second wettest monsoon. We need three tenths of an inch of rain. That's showing just a quarter of an inch of rain. So awfully close. We're going to get close, it looks like, uh, to moving up in the rankings. Uh, otherwise, we'll be cooler than normal and then ending up back to normal with low 90s and sunny weather as we move through the weekend. 
All right, thank you so much, Ryan. For the first time in 12 seasons, there's a new head coach for Arizona basketball. Ahead, Tommy Lloyd talks about the style he likes to play. Plus, we'll let you know who's going to play point guard for point guard U. You. You're watching KGA9 on your side. Now, KGA9 on your side sports. Sponsored by Casino Del Sol. I'm Jason Barr. New coach, new style of play. Tommy Lloyd begins his first season as Arizona basketball head coach and he promises to play fast and up tempo. Here's a look at this afternoon's practice at McHale Center. Lloyd was a 20 year assistant coach at Gonzaga. The Wildcats are getting ready for Saturday's red blue game. Number 10 Azulis Tubelis with the bucket here. Here is Tommy Lloyd on his brand of basketball. The reason I like to play fast is I just think there's a lot of advantages to it. I think you got a lot, you get a lot of easy scoring opportunities, and and you're not playing fast to the point where you're playing out of control or turning the ball over. You're playing fast to create easy opportunities, and that's the reason we we play fast. It's not, I mean, I know it might, it might be appealing to watch and everything, but that's not the reason. The reason is because I think it's the best way to win the most basketball games. Best of both worlds. Number 25, Kirk Creaser returns to the team this year, but he's going to be the point guard. Last year he was shooting guard. Creasa tells me this is his natural position. I was point guard all my life before I came here, so it's nothing new for me. Uh, yeah, I've been playing point guard like 15 years of my life, so it should have been, should have been, yeah. Center Umar Balo is one of the new players. He is a transfer from Gonzaga who followed Lloyd to Tucson. 